Foot Clan, we have a huge show today. Monday Pun Day makes its return. Studs and duds watch Jason melt into a puddle. <laughs> Just a, a sad, sad man who relates with some of you who got dud performances from big time stars. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday. September 26th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Hello. Great friend of the show, Jason Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Jason had a tough weekend. I'm Andy Holloway. You know, it is... We're getting it out of the way right off the bat. The, yes. I mean, the this, this is what we... When I am not looking forward to the show, you just you got to hit it head on. You get it out of the way. Because, the herd of elephants in the room. Because you actually you feel better. You feel better. And I through, doubt it. through Jason's pain, mm -hmm. I'm surprised you're here. Many of our listeners, like because not everybody gets to win every week, many will they will vent. Mm -hmm. They will be redeemed through your rage. I am here. Unleash the fury, for you Foot Clan. If you had a bad week against <laughs> an arch rival, an inferior Here, lineup. Here's what's so funny. How and, uh, dare you? Yeah. On paper. On paper, should have been the better team. Uh, you know, but Justin Jefferson, obviously, he sucks. And I didn't realize that. I thought he... Oh, you got... Yeah, you I fell for it. I thought he was good. You fell for that last year stuff. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Unfortunately, Andy <laughs> did beat me. And, you know, it's funny. Like, I'm super tilted, super upset. Football's the worst. We can all agree with this if we lost. <laughs> Thank you for listening. But this but this show is like, I actually had a great weekend. Like, I, win, I won almost Could've, everywhere. Okay. I, I won our, our Dynasty League, our, our Dino Junior, I, right. my Megala Bowl, uh, uh, our League of Shadows. You didn't None, get shamed? I got shamed? I didn't get shamed. None of that matters. Not one of those victories <laughs> gives me an ounce of solace. The only thing that matters is the league of record where my dominant, awesome team crapped its pants against my division rival, Andy, who oh, had man. all of his rookie wide receivers go off. Yeah. And um, one of them left the field, but but decided I need to come back and get more points for yeah. Andy. So um, that's how my <laughs> weekend went. Um, no, that's that's a great summation. And and no, ordinarily, when you face a you know kind of an arch rival, a good friend in a fantasy league, there's some back and forth. There's some like, I got you. I'm dunking on you. Yep. You dunk on me. Oh yeah, let's go. Jason took care of all of it all by himself. Mm -hmm. You didn't need me to be involved in the back and forth. There was an active back and forth taking place in the studio all Sunday between Jason and Jason. <laughs> and, Jason yes. and Jason. It yeah. was It was not fun. Yeah. It, it was, was a tilt apocalypse. It was very uh Eddie Brock Venom situation where he's just you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> Think you're like you're pretending you're talking to us, but, but we <laughs> are not, not. We're not responding, and no. you're filling in the blanks. Yeah, that's no. Right. So, um, yeah, Jay, you know that's how it goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a long <laughs> season. You got a really good team. You just got outsmarted by uh, yours yeah. truly. Yeah. Well, at least my bench did good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, we're getting into studs and duds on today's show, so we will talk through some of these performances from players that. Uh, the, you know what the fantasy world is going through when a player that has had a good season thus far has one bad week and the tweets are what's going on with this guy <laughs> as though it is a pattern and not simply one week. The expectations are so high studs and duds. Like I said, news to talk about. We do want to get sophisticated, though. Monday, pun day. We must. Reactions from the weekend, from the Foot Clan. <clears throat> you guys ready? <clears throat> yes. 
I think I'll kick it off. Yes, you deserve this one. With Chris... Whoa, Lave! Yeah, yeah, I played against Chris Osuave. <laughs> but did you play against the Star Jackson? Ooh, or Daryl Horrendison? <laughs> oh, that one's that's, that's, good. that's pretty good. Uh, Jollywood Brown. You did play against him. I did, I did. Uh, this one might take you a moment, but Tyler Gronklin. I like that one. That's sophisticated. I, it's very. Oh, boy. Then we've got uh, very simple here. Aesop. Uh, his fables. Ty Week <laughs> Hill. Ty Week Hill. Sophisticated reference, Jason. Thank yes. you. Uh, where? Oh, Justin Hurtbert. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one's pretty good. Tyreek Nil as well. Oh. And yes. of course, Mark Outstandrews. And finally, Cortland Strutton. Mm. It's pretty good. Yeah. I still can't figure Cortland Sutton out yet. Because just, I don't know if just it's embrace it. I don't know if it's being force fed everything because everyone else is so horrendous on that offense. Doesn't matter. But he's or is how, he good? It, I don't. The, I mean, I just both of these things can be true, and both of these things don't matter. Was that eleven to ten? Yes. Was that the final Ele- score? Eleven to ten. Oh. Uh, for the <laughs> keep in mind how great. How incredible, in fact, historically maybe the best ever this AFC West division is. <laughs> um, you know, the like the Chiefs who... Oh, my goodness. Who just, Did they all lose? L- no. Well, they all the, lost except for the... Oh, the Broncos won. The yeah, Broncos they, they who were terrible won with 11 points. Wow, it was a bad week for that division. Also, uh, Trey Lance, maybe he was not the problem. <laughs> hmm? Um, Garoppolo. I think it was neither problem nor solution. I'm just, I'm yeah, saying, yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo was terrible, terrible, including the what is the Orlovsky? Yes, How is that yes, the, walking uh, out the back of the, the end zone. old back out of the end zone, which actually stopped a pick six because so, so very smart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pro move. I'm, you ended up giving up two points and losing by one. While the prolific uh, Broncos offense averaging a cool 14 points a game, still 2-1, and one, the proclamations of their defensive ability were accurate. They just haven't figured out the offense yet, and it's been... Um, and I cannot figure it out either. It's a, It's been bad. Yes. It's been bad, bad. All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Before kickoff, the uh, the Packers put Sammy Watkins on the IR. Christian Watson also didn't play in that game. Julio Jones, uh, he says, uh, Todd Bowles says he expects him back next week. And the Jets have said Zach Wilson's coming back next week. And All right. it, <laughs> you know, they were bad yesterday, really bad. The team. Yes. But we don't care about the team. No, I, I understand. <laughs> I I'm just trying to look at that situation and trying to figure out what kind of real gap there's going to be in production. Sure. Um, It will all come down to whether Zach Wilson can obviously take a step forward. It's just, it was really bad on offense yesterday. If you drafted Elijah Moore, you're not happy. If you drafted Michael Carter, Brees Hall so far, you're not really happy. You know, Garrett Wilson's been the lone bright spot, but, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Apologies to Tyler Conklin. Yes, yeah. Gronklin. Um, who I know people will be picking up, but then that whole world could change with Zach Wilson. That will be a discussion. We will, we'll be watching closely to see what happens with the weapons there. But Dalvin Cook exited with a shoulder dislocation. Uh, this is this is what Dalvin does. Yeah, it's he's, his thing. He's dealt yeah. with shoulder dislocation since high school. Yeah, and and um, so he's gonna play. It's it's really weird because for other <laughs> the device. Oh no, is that the device? <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if, if you are not aware, clearly you can't put it on mid game, right? That's the thing we've learned. Well, yeah. once, once the shoulder pops out, I think it's too painful. You okay. can't device. <laughs> yeah. There was they a. Gotta, there's a lot of lot of Phillips. Things that are oh, happening. Is that a Phillips screwdriver? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Not things. Got yeah, it. You know, Phillips some, things. Yeah. Some flathead things. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So Couple nails. if you weren't with us last year or Gears. are not aware, obviously Dalvin Cook has had this problem many, many times, but last year there was a worry. Oh, he wasn't going to be able to play. And then they talked about, well, they, they've got a device that he can wear. <laughs> 
the the device um, that he wears trademark to <laughs> yes to uh, be able to play with this injury. And then everyone was afraid to play him, and he had pretty much the greatest game of all time wearing the device because well, he didn't have to worry about his shoulder yeah. getting hurt. He's like, I can run freely. <laughs> it's like when the guys break their hands or their forearm and they wear the club. Yeah, I mean that has to help you. The club then, arm has to help. And then well, they're just beating the crap yeah. out of guys with it. I mean, it's so funny. It's immunity. <laughs> So uh, to to kind of skip news here to uh, DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift um, missed a lot of yesterday's game too. And originally it was like, oh no, so maybe the ankle wasn't getting better. No, it turns out he hurt his shoulder in that game. And they're saying he could miss some time. Dude, get the device. <laughs> How come Dalvin can do it? Just strap the device on There's Swift. only one. There's there, one device. Yeah, that's right. It's very expensive. Tony Stark made it he, and there's yeah. one of them. <laughs> This is ridiculous. But, no, I mean, that is bad news. The DeAndre Swift, I mean, if you're a running back and you, and you were expected to do something big and your name starts with the letter D, you got injured. Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Swift, sprained shoulder, could miss time. Jamal Williams obviously took over and was great. David Montgomery exited with an ankle and knee injury, and this one really, really hurt because it happened early, mm -hmm. and it was a matchup that we love for David Montgomery, and then Khalil Herbert took the ball and ran with it. Oh, man, did he. He dominated. We had uh, David Montgomery, uh, both of us, Andy and I, in our DraftKings lineup, and it, it stinks to have been so right and so wrong at the same time. Yeah, the initial report is day-to-day, -day, but this is, um, you know, at least from Matthew Betts, he said the mechanism looked like a high ankle sprain, maybe an MCL sprain. We have no new information, so we are waiting. Joe Mixon didn't play in the fourth quarter due to a minor ankle injury. Zach Taylor said the ankle was sore after the game, so he, you know, disappointing week, missed a quarter of this football game. And the Saints wide receiver room, Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry, both exited early. Both have been initially reported not serious, but more tests today. Michael Thomas, the toe, Landry, the ankle. Olave, the rest of the targets. Yes. Yeah. It, it's amazing because Jameis is still Jameis. I mean, sure. you finally look at this situation and, and you're like, how can they score so little and yet players like Olave and Michael Thomas have been valuable? And it comes down to Jameis being Jameis. He is the number one in average uh, depth of target. Just go, Yeah, I mean, he goes Because he field. chucks it. Yeah. And um, so... And we, we like that about you, Jameis. You know, continue. Let's go down the field, buddy. How's well, it, how are his uh, interceptions doing? Um... I'm going to verify that. I don't think he's on 28 interception pace, but Chris Olave, huge game for Chris Olave. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> yeah. I forgot there was three last week, two this week. Yeah, so so this is classic Jameis. Now, rest of season after week three, do you want Olave or the other wide receivers? He's currently, in the last two games, pacing for 42 and a half. Okay. Just <laughs> thank wow. you for the Very Thank nice. you for the math. Um, no, Olave is the wide receiver to have. He is the young ascending talent who is only going to get better um, as the year goes on into his rookie season, and he's already shown that he might be the best today. So, yeah, Olave over those two other guys. Mac Jones exited early with a left high ankle sprain. Mm. This one's looking uh, serious. The x-rays were negative, but uh, he was in immense pain. He's going to probably miss some time. Yeah, MRI today, and the they play the Packers defense in week four. Oh, Damien and Ramondre. Uh, yeah. I mean, yep, Devontae Parker won't repeat. Uh, no. AJ Green exited early with a knee injury, did not come back into the game for the Cardinals. Uh, if you've followed any of our Twitters over the last 24 <laughs> hours, it's been very negative about the Cardinals. Uh, Cliff, Keim, Kyler, all of them. It is worth saying that Kyler did expect to have you know, more weapons at his disposal to begin the year, right? You have literally now. Did he ha did he forget that he has two registered weapons like underneath his hips? Oh, his his legs. Yeah. Kyler, run the freaking ball, man. You're like the fastest guy on the field. What are you doing? No Hopkins, no Rondale Moore, um, no AJ Green, no Antoine Wesley. It is Hollywood and the Dorch. <laughs> And that's where we're at with Arizona's offense. And they can't run the football. For Let me just throw that out there. True. Your, your passing game, if you cannot run the football at all, it's it's pretty awful. 
So uh, I I don't understand why he's not running himself. Yeah. But two carries for eight yards last game, where that's his special ability. And for fantasy purposes, you know you, we love the mobile quarterbacks because they give you a guaranteed baseline. The Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, if they're if their passing game isn't on, it's fine because you know that that just means they're going to rush for fifty sixty yards. That's what should be happening with Kyler. You know he's had over twenty rushing yards the first two weeks. So hopefully they go back and look at the tape and say. Maybe we should have used that weapon. Yeah, they did run some options where he pitched every time. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you if you don't pitch, you maybe you have rushing yards. I don't I don't know what's going on in Arizona, other than they suck. All right, Kadarius Tony doubtful for tonight. Dalton Schultz uh, questionable. Uh, he will test the knee pregame. Hopefully, you made other plans because Dalton Schultz could be limited or out. Michael Gallup expected to be inactive tonight against the oh. Giants. Not returning yet. They're going to wait another week. Okay. That's a lot of news. Yep. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, through three weeks, Lamar Jackson is... Good heavens. Back in MVP Lamarvelous form. 18 for 29. Uh, what was his uh, passing touchdown total? Four. Okay. That that was uh that's an impressive stat line. Two Don't forget for the rushing four, touchdown. With a rushing touchdown and a hundred and seven on the ground. <laughs> oh brother. And uh he managed to do literally all of this without using one of Jason's fantasy starters, Rashad Bateman. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> he, he was on a, my team. He caught a couple. Let's point out in the studs and duds who I played your against roster and, who I played, and, yeah. and what worked out. Let's do that. Um, your quarterback, Jalen Hurts, 22 for 35, 340 and three. Um, he played is the great. first player with at least 900 passing, 100 rushing yards through three games. Yeah, Ian Hart, it's, uh just tweeted, only one quarterback has zero turnover-worthy plays this season. That's it, amazing. It is Jalen Hurts. All it right. seems as though he is... Um, he's processing things quickly. The offensive line is performing for him. He has multiple elite weapons on the outside with Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Goddard is a mismatch in the middle of the field. And then when everything goes wrong, like these are the hardest quarterbacks to get off the field on third down because you get to a third and four, third and five. It's almost... How do you stop it? You, it's just very difficult. If he's rolling out and using his legs and doing the things Kyler can't do apparently... It's been so impressive. Now, Hurts, I don't think he scored in the second half in the past two games. No, so I believe both weeks they scored 24, they being the Eagles, 24 first half points dominating their opponent and came out in the second half and scored zero both weeks. So that I think one thing you can point to there is how dominant the Eagles' defense has been. And so that does put Hurts into a position of protecting a lead in the second half, which maybe that means they're not going to um, – you know, keep the foot down on the pedal, but uh, you got to protect what you got, which was the lead. And so Hertz has been doing that and taking care of business. I believe the Eagles and Dolphins, the only two undefeated teams. And the Giants. <laughs> okay. I mean, you were right. And it could still be right after the, it, after tonight. Yeah, it could. And um, that'll be like everybody's not in on the joke. Like the Giants – We'll be strutting hey. with the other two. Hey, do work, New York. Yeah, go get it. Um, Josh Allen plays uh, football. Very good player. Um, highly recommend. <laughs> uh, in fact, he's excellent. Uh, threw the, did he throw the ball 63 times? He threw it 63 <laughs> times. Sometimes to uh, my starting running back, Devin Singletary. Oh, yeah. What a great week he had against yeah, about me. 20 fantasy We're points. not there yet. He brought it up. <laughs> it was it was my fault. Don't you tell uh, me. Now, I mean, Josh Allen, excellent. The thing to watch for Josh Allen will be uh, the finger. He hit it on someone's face mask on that final drive. He proclaims he's good. Coach McDermott says he's good. Final pass of the game said it was not good because he dumped that thing into the ground with a chance to. I don't know if it was tie or or take the lead. I can't recall the numbers, but his hand wasn't good on that drive. We'll see how he's doing throughout the week. Well said. All right, Trevor Lawrence looked outstanding. He did. I mean, this offense with Doug Peterson looks like it is aware of what it needs to do to succeed. It's converting third downs. It's using 
Travis Etienne in space where he succeeds and then handing the ball to James Robinson and letting him go for his weekly jaunt into the end zone. Uh, and, they're and Lawrence is, is protecting the football. And, and they are protecting Trevor Lawrence very well, not just uh, offensive line-wise, but scheme-wise. No sacks in that game for my fantasy defense. <laughs> So that's cool. Yeah, you played the Chargers. Uh, yeah, I did. Who gave up 38 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is right. And they lost Bosa in that game. That was fun. All yeah. right. We'll continue the tilt train. <laughs> Joe Burrow, bounce back game against the Jets. Uh, despite losing uh, T. Higgins for a small period of time in that game, Tyler Boyd doing his occasional thing. Yep, there's one. So, I mean. There's normally, what, two to three? Yep, you got at least one left. Who? We don't know when it will be, but he'll have another one just like that. And then uh, Derek Carr, Geno Smith, Ryan Tannehill, Kirk Cousins with decent weeks. Um, yep. There you go. Running backs, <laughs> Khalil Herbert. <laughs> oh, 20, baby. 20 for 157 against Houston, two rushing touchdowns. And, you know, the, the story of Khalil Herbert last year was very good when Montgomery was out. Uh, sort of like what we've seen with Madison at times in Minnesota, but – you know, you like having a backup that you know can come in and, and number one, take all the work, mm -hmm. right? You're not a committee. And number two, be effective, at least while they do that. So if Montgomery w was to miss, they have the Giants in Minnesota in the next two weeks, and Khalil Herbert will be a uh, must-start yeah, top 10 running back. And a big, you know, the big decision will be tomorrow on the waiver show, how much fab do you spend on him? based on the news we have on Montgomery, because if Montgomery ends up in the status quo right now of day-to-day, -day, it's very difficult to say go out there and spend 70% of your fab on a guy you have a one-week rental on. It's right. not going to be in that category. I think that you should go hard after it because whether they say day-to-day -day or not, I mean, first of all, if you're the David Montgomery manager, you need him desperately. He looks great. He's one of the rare situations where – the backup is probably better for fantasy when he gets the opportunity than the starter was because the competition for touches is gone. Like Khalil Herbert ate into David Montgomery. Well, now with David Montgomery out, Khalil Herbert's going to be a, a massive win. And and I think if it's you an interesting point, if you can get Khalil Herbert off of the waivers, and you uh, you will still be able to capitalize on his value even if you want to trade him to the David Montgomery manager when his time is done. Yeah, we did have a galaxy brain in our league. <laughs> oh, my god. It was goodness. not galaxy brain. That, that foresaw this event and played Khalil Herbert anyways. Yeah, sometimes. To great success. Sometimes there's a team that is just so bad that they are starting Herbert for, no, as a backup running back, and then you just fall backwards into 30 points or whatever it was. So Fa congratulations, Gabe. Fantasy football <laughs> is special. Uh, Jamal Williams. 20 for 87 and two. Uh, this was a product of DeAndre Swift barely playing and Jamal Williams getting a lot of opportunity. And this offense can move the football. They just have been able to. Uh, still lost to the Vikings who chose not to use Justin Jefferson. Uh, it was a disappointing ending to that game. Derrick Henry, the Yeti, 20 for 85 and a rushing touchdown. Should have had two. They went Ryan Tannehill sneak on one of those. We told you. The, the snow. Yeah, in thoughts Vermont. on the snow model. The snow in Vermont is undefeated. Now, I have a question about the snow model. Okay. Um, is it just. I have a, a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, but the, the big question is is this a. It must keep snowing in Vermont. Yeah, or it, or is, is it a it, Groundhog Day type of thing? Yeah, where once this, you see your shadow, you know, once, once the snowfall hits. Exactly. Once the snowfall hits in Vermont, it's, he's the Yeti. For the rest of the year, or do, do we need more nope. snow? We need to check in every week, Mike. Okay. Well, Matthew Betts is there on the ground in All Vermont. Right. Well, of course. We had to. I mean, this is this utmost is serious. importance. We probably should call him, FaceTime him and get a get a good look ourselves. It was good to see snow, oh, oh, snow but also Derrick Henry have a lot of success. and, and you know, Targets. We, yeah. Five for 58 through the air. Honestly, that's that's the big difference. Just get him the ball in space. I mean... His big catch he was barely a catch because he, he caught it a few times. He's not good at catching the ball. And even when he juggled it and bobbled it and stopped and paused and then was like, okay, now I've got it, boom, 30-yard gain. It's like, yeah, maybe throw it, throw it to him more. Because 20 for 85 and a score, if you got that from Derrick Henry, you're like, that's, that's good. That's, that's a good-ish game. 
it's not elite, but then when you add in five receptions and 58 extra yards, I mean, then Derrick Henry belongs number three on the studs list here. This next player, um, from what I understand, has, he has a, a a printout of Mike Wright's face in his locker. That's fine. And uh, That's fine. I've, I've taken the L here. Cordero Patterson, 17 for 141 and 1. <laughs> Also is uh, through three weeks the RB four on the season, Kyle. Right now, that's where he is. Go Falcons! Right, we the, got a, we got our win. Yeah, they snuck out a dub on the road. The here's what's wild about <laughs> Patterson. There's a lot, but go I, on. But to me, this is the wildest part of it. Because L, I was wrong. I was out on Patterson. He's making me look foolish. One target. The entire argument for Cordero Patterson is he is a wide receiver converted into a running back, so he's going to catch three to four passes minimum a week. He's not catching any passes. He's just dominating on the ground. I, I'm pretty sure you said Cordero Patterson, and that sounds like what he's doing as a running back. He, he is. Yes. He's just People have been impaled. Oh, man. He's, he's looking great. Would you cash in, Jason? Absolutely. Last year was a great start for Cordero, mm -hmm. older player. Um, absolutely probably get Damian Williams back at some point you try yes, to cash in on I that. would 100% try to cash in I I'm I have not been anti Cordero Patterson I don't think he is going to be worthless the rest of the year and now is your only chance but he plays for the Falcons who are not that great and he just dominated against the Seahawks who are worse he's coming up against the Cleveland Browns the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the San Francisco 49ers in the next three games so yeah I would try to cash in on Cordero uh, speaking of cash in opportunities, I'm going to give you another one that I think is in that category. Chase Edmonds. Sure. Chase Edmonds had six carries for 21 yards. One target has not been in on the majority of snaps compared to Mostert, but scored twice. And so this could be an opportunity to include him in a trade upgrade. Make sure you screenshot only the total fantasy points. That's yeah. right. There's there's some strategy yes. to that. I would also, and I know we've we've said this. Uh, you know, I I said this last week. He had another good week, but um, just because of touchdowns, I would again cash in on Clyde edwards alaire as well. Another touchdown. The utilization is not yeah, what you want. I think McKinnon had. Did McKinnon have more rushing attempts? Uh, I can we can vet that really quick. But he, McKinnon looked like he was the primary guy in this game. Now maybe because of the, uh, the game script where the Kansas City Chiefs. Lost to the Colts because the NFL is drunk. Uh, it's I mean, good, always drunk. Good for you, Indianapolis. That's a huge win, but I, perhaps that that's the reason why McKinnon was on the field more. Other studs this week at running back. Devin Singletary, mm -hmm. 11 targets, 9 for 78 and a touchdown. Um, I don't know if this was a product of Miami's pass rush and just being available in the middle of the field. He doesn't normally get that kind of passing game work, but – uh, it seemed like the Zach Moss experiment was slightly minimized. I don't know if the snap counts were up on Singletary. Do you have that number in front of you, Kyle? Can you look at that? I can look it up. Take a look to see because it seemed like Singletary was out there more because he was playing against Jason. Uh, yeah, that is the reason. And so if he's not playing for your team against me, we'll I play doubt. again later yeah. this year. We'll let, we'll let the Foot Clan know when to start uh, Devin Singletary. It's also the rational thing for this team to do. He, Devin Singletary is really good. He's a good player. He just doesn't usually get the volume and the, the workload. Whenever he's received it, he's been great. I mean, he won people fantasy championships at the end of last season when they were giving him the uh, usage, and he had 20 opportunities this week alone. So yeah, going forward, you've got to keep an eye on him. 73% of snaps, Moss at 17%, Cook at 12 That's a go. huge difference in his involvement. James Robinson can't be stopped. 17 for 101, play him. Did he get stronger? Yes, uh, uh, steal his, of the dress. He did get stronger. Can we get like the other Achilles? Just get you know what if he busted oh, that one? Double double. He'd probably just he, unstoppable. Doug Peterson is helping this team. Yes. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, twelve for seventy three and a rushing touchdown, five targets. Looked pretty good. Some of that promise people were hoping for um, is going to get rough without Mac Jones. So you know maybe he can benefit from a. You know, if they're losing to Green Bay, Ramondre could be out there catching passes next week. And Damian Pierce, 20 for 80 and a touchdown. Looked pretty good. Last two weeks combined, Pierce has 35 carries and three targets. Burkhead has three carries. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Kyle. Is that an original? Uh, I've, I've heard it okay. places. The Achilles steal. That's uh, what they're calling James okay. Robinson. Okay. 
Yeah, okay. I get it. Steal it took of me the a draft, second. the RB two on the year. Okay, okay. It took you a second. It did. It did. Because <laughs> I wasn't thinking about like draft day value. Like, okay. Uh, but now you are. Yeah. All right. Uh, quick break, and then we're into the wide receiver studs. The Achilles was actually, um, you know, they lost this week. James Robinson looked good. Cardinals made Cam Akers look good. Yep. Um, you yeah, talked about Daryl Herenderson. I mean, it's cause Cam Akers was on the field a ton. Just needed some confidence. And he yeah. got it from uh, Bird got another City. Achilles. Um, Bird City football. Bird City football, whatever yeah. it is. It's what stupid. It? Turd City football. Um, we'll see Sterling Shepard out there tonight Yeah, against his Achilles. So, All right. Jason, Devontae Smith, 12 Ooh. targets, 8 for 169. Multiple highlight reel catches from the should I drop him Devontae Smith managers uh, week one. Hopefully you didn't, but I know. There was no player on people's bench more than Devontae Smith this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the one that uh, he, because he went off in such glorious fashion, it will feel the worst. Uh, he Now that you see that the Eagles – you know, at the end of last year, it was like, well, they were such a run-heavy team. Are they going to pass the ball? Are they going to open it up enough? Yes. They have tried to do that. It has worked to great success. Yes. Hertz will continue throwing the ball. You have to start Devonta Smith. That does not mean he's going to be great week in and week out. Wide receivers are inconsistent, but he is obviously very talented. A.J. Brown was great, too. Five for 85 and a touchdown. Matt Collins. Yeah. Matt Collins filling in for Hunter Renfro Let's and, go. and filling in for Devontae Adams. Let's go, Mac. There's nothing. If you have Devontae Adams as a fantasy manager, and then you on the other side of the field, Matt Collins goes for eight for 158 and a touchdown, that is the kind of thing that you will feel like Jason yeah. this week. Yeah, you feel like, why do you keep why didn't throwing you start it to Matt Adam Collins? Thielen instead well, we, of – we did. Yeah, we, we, we both started Matt Collins against you in the uh, – DraftKings. Yeah, pivoting from him moments before the show was a bad decision. <laughs> uh, but Matt Collins, big week. Hollywood Brown. Hollywood. 17 targets, 14 receptions, 140 receiving yards. <laughs> and uh, despite not getting into the end zone the last two weeks, is the wide receiver 13 on the on the year. Well, he did get into the end zone two weeks ago. They just didn't credit him with the touchdown. But um, this is what you were hoping, right? To start the season was the the target volume that, you know, all it took was more and more injuries to the wide receiver court. And oh. they took a deep shot to him in the third quarter of this game. That oh, barely missed. missed. Yeah, they set up this play. It was like one of the two times that Kyler threw it more than four yards. And uh, that would have, you know, been an explosive week. I was going to say 140 total yards on 17 targets. Yep. Is doo doo. No, like, yeah, I mean, everything's. That is terrible. I told you. It's great for fantasy. I told you in the game, Mike. It was. Uh, he's running the Hopkins route bush yeah. plan where you are close to the line of scrimmage. And it's just. it. I don't want to get started on the Cardinals because we don't have enough time. Like someday yeah. we'll just create a trash the Cardinals podcast. Mm hmm. <laughs> And again, I don't know if we'll have enough time or the hard drive space for that, but we'll we'll have to look into the cloud. Um, yeah, we'll have to look into that. Uh, Amari Cooper, we talked about him. Zay Jones, yeah. Zay Jones yeah. is, is going to be talked about tomorrow because through three weeks, very involved in this Jacksonville offense. Eleven targets, scored ten for eighty-five. He was on the cusp of really being a pickup this past week. It's great. Yep. Yeah, and Christian Kirk continues to be great. I had my concerns for him for this week against the Chargers. I didn't realize that they were taking the week off uh, for all aspects of football. And Christian Kirk ended up with six for 72 with a touchdown. He looks, I mean, that he has not he finished is, lower than the wide receiver 20 on the week. He is paying off massively for the Jaguars, that contract. I mean, if Christian Kirk is here, to, I mean, he's unlocking I think a lot of this offense. Chris Olave. Yeah, baby. 13 targets, 9 for 147, and looks outstanding out there. Uh, always open down the field and has a quarterback willing to chuck it. Those Ohio State wide receivers, they are so fast. I mean, it's just Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, whenever they're on the field, they, they look like they're just – a different speed. A different speed yeah. than the defenders. It's uh, 
you know, similar to Waddle and Tyreek. Apparently, all you need to do is just go get the the world's fastest people. And Not then, always, because that was that was like that was the Raiders' strategy. Darius Hayward Bay for a really long time. You also need them to be able to catch and run good routes. But Olave looks like a must start moving forward. Yes, uh, Russell Gage had 13 targets. He was de the de facto yeah. numero uno. He won the lottery. I would let other people compete for Russell Gage That's on the waiver I. wire. Yep. Um, other stars this week. Uh, I, you know, Isaiah McKenzie looked uh, really good to me. Uh, very fast, seven for seventy-six and a touchdown. Romeo Dobbs. This is the big one. So these other mentions here, you know, Boyd, Parker, McKenzie. I'm not chasing those points, but Romeo Dobbs, the being necessary for the team. Number one, the the Lizard King on IR. The second round pick, Christian Watson, not able to play. Randall Cobb was questionable with illness coming into the game. We we didn't know if he was actually going to play. He did. So it was. Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs are like the two guys left, and Romeo Dobbs took on the essentially a wide receiver one role here. He got hot right at the beginning of the game, ends with eight targets. Really, was he caught eight, all yep. eight? Eight for seventy three with a touchdown. Uh, I hope I hope people are tuning into Sunday Live because yeah, this was this, a, a mic call on Sunday this, Live. I mean, I'll, I'll toot the horn because I want people to watch the show. We're we're off to a hot start here, week one. Uh, the stash of the week was Jeff Wilson. Week three, the stash of the week was Romeo Dobbs. So he just he now moving forward, it's like this is the type of performance that you can really build on for a rookie in Green Bay and assert yourself over the next few weeks. Of of Sammy Watkins is out for at least three more weeks, and if Aaron Rodgers builds that trust with Dobbs, this becomes very interesting. Are you guys? Was it was it enough for you to see that that you're putting Dobbs into a flex position next week? Um, as Willing far, to, yeah. It, it, it was Tampa. On, I mean, it was a Tampa defense. Yeah, it depends on who else you have to put in. It's going to be the New England defense next week. He's certainly though got to be scooped up if he's out there. Um, you know, he's probably their best wide receiver. I mean, it's I know possible. you. I know you love Lazard. I do. But who I scored. But, yeah, and but he, not he, much he was else. fine. I'm just saying, talent wise, he he looks fantastic, and they're going to need him going forward. Mark Andrews paying off on the draft yep. day price: thirteen targets, eight for eighty nine. Travis Kelsey was four fifty eight and a touchdown. Those two players, you know, I had somebody on Twitter talk about the disappointment, right? With first round running backs right now, it's been it's been tough, right? You're not getting Jonathan Taylor two down weeks. Joe Mixon out. Uh, Dalvin Cook, it's been a it's been a struggle. You've got the injury. Uh, Derrick Henry looked good this week, but McCaffrey not lived up to the billing of of superstardom. Alvin Kamara, been a disaster. Yeesh. And then people are are sitting there and they went they went in early on Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews, and they have a consistent every week advantage at that position. Right now, it's looking like a very wise decision. Yeah, I I, I was so far wrong on. Travis Kelsey, I, I was scared to take him in the first round. I loved Andrews in the second. If you knew that they would be great, then you should be taking those early round tight ends, which is why we liked Andrews in the second. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, if, if it was a guarantee that Kelsey's great all year, the value is, is there in the first. Tyler Conklin is the uh, tight end three in PPR right now. He's had seven plus targets in three games, went eight for 84. Um, conk conk. I mean the yeah. NBA Jam rules. Yeah, they are. They're they say like seven, nine, uh, eight targets. So they say you've got to be in, except yeah. the quarterback change. Yeah. But, the but, the Flacco change. If if it goes away from Flacco, I mean, I just don't think that they're going to let Zach Wilson throw the ball sixty times. You know, uh, they they might. They have right, right. They, they probably have to. They they very well might, but we just don't know. So it's hard to be like, yeah, pick up and play Tyler Conklin. It also doesn't mean those passes will be near the receivers. Right. Um. Let's put a pin in the Conklin conversation and go into tight end waivers tomorrow. Putting these guys in order. Njoku had a big week. Jason, you asked me about Goddard and Pitts and who I thought would finish the season better. Both had much better weeks. Kyle Pitts five for eighty seven. Almost all of that four for eighty two in the first half. And then Dallas Goddard scored again. So, um, 
you know, if, if our advice was just keep playing Kyle Pitts because a lot of the chasing of these other options is just you don't have any guarantees in the tight end world, and at least Pitts has the ability to athletically win against anybody. Yeah, and it was easy for him. I mean, they, they could have thrown it to him more. There was another target that was a pretty big bomb target that was not close to him, but he was wide open. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was really nice proof of life to see that Kyle Pitts can have really good games going forward. I do find it hysterical, though, that uh, Jelani Woods has more career touchdowns <laughs> now than Kyle Pitts. Um, oh, that, that hurts. Yeah, it, it's it's wild. So Pitts, though, looked pretty good. They ran the ball like crazy in the second half, too, trying to preserve well, a chance to win. Ripping off 15 yards of carry. All right. Old man strength. It's time to go over Jason's roster. Pooped in his big boy pants. All right. It's time for the duds. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. 20 for 33, 184 yards. Uh -huh. How many touchdowns? Zero. Oh. Okay. Um, six huh? carries. Okay. For 17 yards. Uh, okay. Let's ride. <laughs> yes. I want to play a game. You guys want to? You guys want to play a game? Yes, with <laughs> yes, I do. I'm so excited. Want to play a game with Brooksy? Yeah. This is uh, what's the name of this game, Brooks? This is called Russell Wilson versus Geno Smith through the first three weeks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I am here for this. Okay, so oh, they both no. are very close in attempts. Russell Wilson just has four more pass attempts. Oh, okay. 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 Right. So, so first question: Who has more completions? Russell Wilson or Geno Smith? Oh, I mean, Geno has Gino. been super accurate. Yeah, it's got to be Geno. Uh, okay. Geno. It's Geno. Yeah, oh, baby. 79 uh, completions compared to Russell Wilson's 63. Oh, what a loser, Russ. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, who has more passing yards, Russell Wilson or Geno Smith? Oh, I, I love this game. I love this game because it's all going to be Geno. Uh, Unlimited. I mean, I, I know that's... Well, generally speaking, that's how these games work. Yeah, you want to set one up, right? This got to be got to be Russ. I right? still think this might be Wilson. You go? Would you just say I, Jason? I'm going Gino. Okay, this one is Russ. Oh, oh that's right. What's the difference? Seven forty three to seven seventeen. Oh, well, big deal. Yep, big uh, deal. All right, touchdowns, pass touchdowns. Oh Russell, gosh. Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, or Geno Smith? I mean, does Russ have a Ru passing touchdown? Russ has that one Judy broken play. Oh, that's right. Gino, he has the Metcalf one. Has yeah. He's got it's Gino. Him? It's Gino Smith. Yeah, and he has the the Will Disley. Disley did Disley score yesterday? Oh yeah, he did. Big Montana. Wow. Producers, how was that not in the dock? Unbelievable. At the time, I have to remember position. everything here. There we go. Yeah, big Montana. Hey, Will Disley. Big Montana. They just needed to get him a good quarterback like didn't, Gino Smith. Didn't he defeat the Achilles as well? Uh, was he Achilles or Patella? Uh, he might have been Patella. He might have been all of them. Good. Can't keep a good Disley down. It's impossible. Uh, final answer from the three of us, Geno yeah. Smith. Yep. yep, he's got four. Russ just has the two. I mean, oh, he's got two. Okay. Yep. Wow. And uh, the what matters the most to a fantasy manager is who's got more fantasy points. Well, Geno I mean, Smith. It's got to be Geno. Oh, uh, boy. Yep, he's got a few more points. Wow. That is brutal. Here, here's my advice. Who's got more wins? Let's ride. Yeah. Here's my <laughs> advice. Yeah, I think, yeah, Dilly, Disley was Achilles. It was? Oh, yeah. I think he did both. He did do both. He, this. he is fully, he dev he was, he's wearing a device. He's got to be. I I need to eat more green and yeah. corn. That's country strength. I mean, that's Montana strong, right? Uh-huh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Will Disley. <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo! Um, My advice with Russ is to cut bait. This is not going to get. This is not going to go from where it's at to where you want fast enough for you to be happy. Is that? Do you agree with me? You put him on the waiver wire. You put a little bit of dust over him. Oh, just some just, leaves and stuff. Yeah, and you just you set that trap. Is that someone else in your league is going to see Russell Wilson on the waiver wire? If I saw, yeah, <laughs> honestly, even knowing up like this is our job. 
knowing exactly what has gone on. If I saw Russ on the waiver wire, part of me would go, ooh, that's Russell Wilson. He's surrounded by elite weapons. He has to he has to turn this around. But does he? Well, did you did you see KJ Wright and Richard Sherman's podcast and their conversations about Russ? I did not. Oh no. I'm sure it was they really They spilling that tea? They're spilling a little t- Well, they they just had the contention that he was very protected by Pete Carroll, that he didn't have the same level of accountability and that he was just put in a better position to kind of succeed there and get more of the credit and the defense didn't get a lot of it and and just some oh just some of that maybe they, they weren't dumping uh, on him yeah oh maybe that, that might be Sounds just some a little, sour grapes because yeah. the defense was truly elite but well that's what you do when you want someone to listen to your podcast but russ right? wilson back in seattle was a very good quarterback uh matthew stafford not a good week well because cooper cup ran it in cooper cup ran it in and he only had four catches for 44 yards um, it also was not a good week because Matthew Stafford threw a perfect slant pass to Allen Robinson, who was going to walk into the end zone, and he dropped it. Had no interest. He had no interest in that touchdown, and that meant that Stafford had none. Uh, Kyler and Stafford, in that game, Kyler had 58 pass attempts. Matthew Stafford had 25. They combined for over 560 yards and zero touchdowns. Impressive. 58 attempts turned into 314 yards 25 attempts turned into 249 Arizona is averaging 4.9 yards per passing play ahead of only the Bears feels that way um who have Equinemia St. Brown instead of the Dorch yeah to yeah. headline that cool record. uh Carson Wentz oh the revenge game the Eagles got the revenge yeah what 4200 sacks in that game something like that wait was that I, I, honest, what what was your almost upset? Was it that one? We're not waiting. Okay, it was okay. I didn't remember. <laughs> I didn't remember until this moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, hey, look. No one's. T- I mean, there's two n- and one. Yeah. When you bet on Carson Wentz long enough, you he will reveal himself to you. Yes. Yes. He will take the mask off. Yes. And underneath, it's Carson Wentz. I'm so- <laughs> <laughs> it takes it off. Oh, you were who we thought you were. Ah, uh, yeah. Yo, yeah, what, nine sacks? <laughs> wow. Um, what was the game I tried to hit it on? The Miami game. See, if I had gone with the gut on that one. Miami-Buffalo. Oh, that would have been great. That would have been much smarter. But yep. you, you you didn't. Nine sacks for Carson Wentz. That's, the, the Eagles' defense is legit. Yeah. Uh, Joe Mixon, Leonard Fournette, Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. Oh, man. James Conner. <laughs> Austin Eckler. Just, just keep Javante going. Javante Williams. It is a dud patrol going on here. I mean, this is – the Javante one, is, it drove me crazy. Because That's he, what I want to ask about. Let's talk about him. Go ahead. Because if you didn't watch the game, I mean, 15 attempts, three targets – a game script could go that way for Javante Williams. That's not that's, yeah, that's I mean, not that's horrific. 18 different that's, opportunities. Yeah, that's not horrific volume. But when you look at what happened in this game, Mike Boone became the third down running back for this team, which means that Javante was splitting first and down work with Melvin Gordon. First and down work, right. For, first yeah. and second down work. I got <laughs> ahead of myself there. First and second down with Melvin Gordon, and Melvin Gordon got the touchdown. Yeah, it was um... – it, I think it's the same song that you just press the repeat button every week with the Javante situation, which is everyone's going to get together in our little uh, echo chamber and we're all going to tell everyone, uh, each other, how good Javante looked, which he did once again. He looked great. He had one drive where it seemed like every time they handed him the ball, it was 15, 20 yards. And then they're going to play Melvin Gordon. And then they're, you're going to flip a coin on who's around the goal line on that drive. And it looked like there was maybe a higher baseline for Javante with the passing game work, getting all the targets, and it didn't happen in this game. I think the primary issue here is Russell Wilson. It's the offense as a whole. If the offense is so anemic to, as 11 to only points. score 11 points, so if we're saying you drop Russ, you cut bait, he's not going to get it figured out, do you worry about the potential high-end value of Javante? Because I find myself – conflicted where I, I I'm not confident that Russ and the Broncos are going to figure this offense out in any short order over the next month while still feeling confident that Javante will break something off or get his and get going and I feel like 
I have I have thoughts on that. Those probably need to be more in sync, not opposed. Yeah, I my thought on that is look, you're not going to get to where you want to go with Russ in a week or two. But we often give the advice that a rookie running back, Brees Hall, DeAndre Swift during his rookie year, it takes some time to get them into that position. If it's a month, if we're a month, five, six weeks away, and they do get the offense figured out, and it's a 28-point offense, then you have a lot of upside with Javante Williams to finish the year in the same fashion. There were some signs snap count wise. I don't know what they were in this I, game. I have them. Do that, you? Okay. Because that's, that's my biggest question here, and this is uh, compliments of 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 uh, Nathan Yankee. I think it's Yankee. Yankee. I apologize, Nathan. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but PFF he does fantastic work. And so here's what happened for the Denver uh, the the running backs. Mike Boone played eight third downs. The short yardage went to Melvin Gordon. The, on the goal line, one went to Javante, two went to Melvin Gordon. So, I mean, like, Javante was getting half of the early down work, but short yardage, third downs, those went to somebody else. And that that that's a problem, especially if you're saying short yardage and goal line is not just owned by Javante Williams. That part is split, too, because you can give away the third downs. That There's plenty of running backs in the league, that like Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry. They're not third down guys. But if you have to split the short and the goal line, that's a that's an issue. And if that keeps going moving forward, which we don't know that part yet, but if like next week the split looks like this, I think then you might have concerns of where Javante Williams can actually cap out. 65% of snaps in week two. Do we have a snap count on him in week three yet? We're still waiting to get this back from last night. Okay. So we have 58% week one, 65% week two. Um, yeah, I mean, those, 12 targets in week one. That was anomalous, apparently. You know, Mike Boone, I don't think, was available in that game or they didn't make him available. Something to watch. James Conner has been pretty darn bad. He was a uh, game-time decision in this game. Cardinals cannot run the football. Uh, Conner was, what, 18 touchdowns last year? That's yeah. The entire argument for James Conner was the Arizona Cardinals have a high-powered offense, and when they get to the goal line, they go to James Conner, which they've done. Mm -hmm. Like that, that, that formula. The second half of that statement <laughs> is still true. Yes. The first half of the high powered offense is what's missing. If this offense figures it out, he'll get the touchdowns. And like, they will, they will be much better with the return of Hopkins and Rondell Moore. Who, that, they say Rondell Moore is a week or two away. Yeah. That was my question is with, so we're through three weeks. So that means we have um, still a month until uh, Hopkins is back on the field. Is this a, trade low or like or buy low essentially to get James Conner on your team in the hopes that once Hopkins is back the Cardinals get on track maybe they're not what they were last year but they get back in their you know in the in the top at least half of scoring offenses yeah I mean you you can kick the tires a lot of people need running backs and if you can buy really low sure but I think you're gonna have at least another month of the Cardinals not having a very good offense and if the Broncos don't have a good offense. At least you have explosiveness in Javante. You don't have that in James Conner. Right. Uh, Daryl Henderson experiment. It, four carries, one target. Cam Akers' usage has gone gone up. The snap count has gone up. Five opportunities for Daryl Henderson, 12 for Cam Akers. I mean, it's the, the, the script has flipped, and that means that I don't want either. Okay, Miles Sanders did not give you a good week. No, he did not get the They kept throwing the hoped. football. Yeah. He got 15 carries. It was surprising that he didn't find more success. I think the – Are you panicking about Alvin Kamara? <sighs> yeah, a little bit. I mean, you're, you're – I think you're hoping that the packages in practice were more skewed towards Mark Ingram to provide more rest for Alvin Kamara coming off of the rib cartilage injury. So there's, there's still hope that as he gets healthier that he'll get more work, but – I mean, Kamara's third down work where he's been so good was really going to Mark Ingram. 10-4 to four on third down snaps. Ingram scored a short touchdown as well. Let's talk about... Yeah, okay. Is it time? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Jason, uh, the floor is yours. Austin Eckler. Hmm. Well, you had four carries in this game. Total. You had oh, man. two carries each half. That is yeah, but how many yards did he get on those four carries? I got five of them. Five. There's no five. Yeah, four carries, five yards. First round 
superstar. What is going on? Well, 45 so, pass attempts for Herbert, 48 the week before. Yeah, um, they're not running the ball, but when they run the ball, it's not always Austin Eckler. They are using Sony Michelle. They've used him on the goal line. They've used him for short yardage situations. Uh, he had five carries, I believe. Um, twenty three percent of snaps for Michelle, twenty one percent for Josh Kelly. That puts Austin at fifty five percent. Oh, well, that's is there a, a sad fifty five? Yeah. 55! That was it. That was the sad fifty five. Um. So look, Austin Eckler, eight targets, eight receptions. That's great. He's still, you know, he's still using the passing game. He's going to be valuable. He does not have a touchdown yet on the season. That is not oh, going. The garbage to man can. Yeah, that was like at the end too. The, the touchdown. Um. You know, the touchdowns will come, I mean, to some degree. Uh, obviously not to last year's 20 uh, red zone touchdowns degree. But how worried? Very. Yeah, me He's too. running through three games. He is averaging two and a half yards per carry. Not the greatest stat. Uh, can it, But when you're at two and a half, that is a, that is a stat that is fair to use. Should I bring up the fact that they probably lost – Ronnie Stanley yesterday. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And, and they already were without Corey Lindsley, right? Yeah, I don't know how. How do we know how long Lindsley's injury is? Expected? You meant Rashawn Slater, Andy. I did. Oh Not, yes. Ronnie St Stanley was also out, but for <laughs> Baltimore, correct? correct. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, Kyle. But no, the the offensive line situation, and then this, it's not good. And and the no. amazing thing about you beginning that sentence and talking about Austin Eckler, Jason, is that I thought you were trying to begin the wide receivers. Which you can also do. Yeah, my Austin Eckler was not awesome. Excellent. My Justin Jefferson. Um, so I looked this up this morning. It's a pretty cool stat. Yeah, let's hear <laughs> um, some cool stats. Cool stats. In half-point scoring, Justin Jefferson had his worst game ever, and that includes the first two weeks of his rookie season when, if you don't remember, he wasn't really playing much football. He was barely on the field, but he did manage in those two games to outscore what he did yesterday in a game script where you had to throw the ball the whole time because I was playing against Andy, and that's why he didn't do anything. <laughs> the more you know. Okay. So Andy and I will play again later this season. I will alert everyone, let them know when to bench Justin Jefferson. And that is a joke because you will never bench Justin Jefferson. He will be fine. There was a three-pack of talented wide receivers who – pooped the bed this week and you're going to start them every single week i might not have made kirk cousins my start of the week had i known he was not going to use justin jefferson and yet kirk cousins was okay and they won yeah i mean well, <laughs> they won the, oh my they God. won that's my least favorite part <laughs> <of> this strategy <laughs> worked the, the, as my, did i my least favorite part and i was so upset when they pulled out the victory because they were losing all game they they really got outplayed in their uh, you know, I don't know if that was their home opener, but they were home by the Detroit Lions, divisional rival. But then they snuck out the victory. I was so waiting for all of the accusations of why didn't you get Justin Jefferson more involved from the angry beat reporters at the loss. But then they won, and so it's like, what are you gonna do? Good, good game plan, Adam Thielen. <laughs> uh, we did get word that Justin Jefferson did a backflip in the end zone on the final snap. There's real video, actually. You can see him. He yeah. does a flip. Yeah, he does a backflip on oh. the kneel down. Okay, so that eliminates any health concerns. Yeah. Uh, if a man <laughs> if a man is doing a backflip right. on the field, I presume the legs are functional. Yeah. No, yeah. Unfortunately, most leagues do not award any points for that. Yeah. Fourteen total yards for Justin. Uh, yeah. These are these are not going to be you know the big names here. Jefferson, Chase, Tyreek Hill finally had a dud game. Um, those are players that are always in your lineup. It, it's just the way that it works. Uh, Buffalo is a good defense, and Tyreek just wasn't the guy this week. These other names, more worthy of discussion, 45 pass attempts for Justin Herbert. Only six of those pass attempts went to Mike Williams. One for 15 and a touchdown. Oh, I had him. He was, you he did was have him. Too. Oh. Um, Gabe Davis, three for 37. Uh, it seemed like he was playing at less than 100%. But, but he was still the dude. I mean, he was out there for 87 snaps compared to Stephon Diggs, 64. So... Yeah, there he was, was he was at least he was the dude, but he was a dude this week. Yes, DJ Moore. DJ Moore is so concerning. Um, I mean, he has been putrid on the season. One touchdown to salvage 
a fantasy no week. No wonder you tried to move him. Oh, I Because he, he's got one catch for two yards this past week with Baker, Pump, oh Fake, Mayfield. Gosh. And that was with him playing, uh, I don't know if it was 100% of the snaps, but he was just about that. I mean, 100% of dropbacks. He is on the field. He is their wide receiver one. And their wide receiver one is worthless right now because Baker and this offense is un watchable can i can i correct what i said it's not double it's, it's not pump fake baker mayfield it's quattro clutch it's like instead of a double clutch it's a triple clutch it's a quattro clutch he okay. he looks so skittish and scared it's a back pedal while he screams fake throwing the ball if you could have the announcers play uh, like you know how there's there used to be laugh tracks there needs to be oh, no. when, when the set when the snap happens they need to play a <laughs> sound just on repeat because that's how baker plays football now they go they put the laugh like ah, and then then the ball goes like an errant throw and then you go the oh yeah exactly <laughs> social media team make it happen the 80s sitcom carolina panthers yeah so, also uh i mean we're not in that that area but uh baker christian mccaffrey he is a he's really good at catching the ball try try him you out should, you give should him a go just a few just, just uh, a few. Al Robinson, five targets, two for twenty-three. Dropped the touchdown. Not integral. They didn't. You know, Stafford threw zero touchdowns in this game. They won with uh, a total of six receptions between Cup and Robinson. But you know, you look at a couple situations. Okay, Allen Robinson. It's not been pretty for three weeks. Got into the end zone last week, but the target totals, the reception totals have been bad. You look at another player that had a bad week this week, but was on the field for 27 of 29 dropbacks, Traylon Burks. If you're moving forward, are you? if you had to flex one of those players, wow. would you flex Traylon Burks, who's had limited opportunities but looked okay, starting to get the snap counts up, or would you just give Allen Robinson a shot? Because the one thing they have done is if they're around the goal line, I mean, he's got five, six, seven red zone, or sorry, end zone targets. Wh which one would you do? I'm asking for a friend. I would... If it, who would I prefer on my team right now? It would be Burks because he's ascending, and Allen Robinson is is stagnant, if not declining. I I don't know that I would play Burks over Robinson just yet, uh, but that that change is going to happen very soon. Yeah, that's well said. I think it's the exact situation that that uh, that's exactly how I feel. Brandon Cook, seven targets, two for twenty two. Man, huge target share, terrible catch rate. Um, they you know none of the Davis Mills hopes and dreams have been coming to fruition. Correct. So Rashad Bateman two for fifty nine. Um, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Just not on a week when Jason plays me. Yeah. Uh, KJ Hamler goosed. Jerry Judy didn't look good to me. Uh, two for seventeen. Uh, I don't know if this was injury or just being Jerry Judy. Those yeah. things are hard to distinguish. Yeah, we 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 don't know yet. John Dotson, just two catches this week, did not get in the end zone. And then uh, Curtis Samuel, 7 for 48. I'm not worried about that. Ten no. targets. You, you got 13 opportunities for Curtis. Eagles are good. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. The, the Washington Manders, wide receivers, it's a down week, but the volume was there. We are three weeks in, and Elijah Moore has not given you a, a good fantasy week. Ten targets. So, and and he, had, he was very close to a deep touchdown that was it just – just didn't connect so keep him on the bench until he gives you a game yes um what else do we have the the wide receivers in kansas city can be trusted can't play him. for nothing can't play him and then darren waller not a big week for him george kittle on the return just four for 28 zach Ertz 10 targets six for 45 <laughs> i'd take that in a ppr league yeah and there you go yeah that is the end We've, We've reached the end. We did it. I hope everyone feels better. Anybody do, we I, didn't cover on your roster, Jason? I feel better. Um, no, thankfully they were all on the uh, poops. So we got. <laughs> oh, you did start Evan Ingram. I did start Evan Ingram over. Uh, he almost scored. Yeah, he, he almost was very close. It was called a touchdown on the field, um, but I didn't. I benched Hawkinson, who yeah, he did score a real touchdown. So everyone, pray for Jason. We'll be back with the waiver <laughs> show tomorrow. See you later. Enjoy the Monday night game, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter 
at the FF Ballers.